Hey everyone, I'm Kirby. This is Kirby Meets Audio, and today I'm gonna answer some of your comments. So I built this speaker a few weeks back, and you guys had some questions, so let's answer them. All right, so the first comment comes from Mike Goppert, uh, and it starts, beautiful Kirby. Well, thank you. Uh, how's the acoustic quality of the epoxy? Any concerns? Also, what did you put in the epoxy? Can you drop or add a link? Thanks. So I did get a lot of questions regarding the sound quality of the speakers using the epoxy resin and what exactly I used to color the epoxy. Um, and that stuff, I'll put links down in the description of this video. As for the sound quality, I haven't done any specific testing uh, with this front baffle, um, but to my ear, it sounds great. Uh, just as good, if not better, than the maple that makes up the rest of the uh, front baffle. And, and that makes sense to me. I don't see any reason why the hard epoxy resin wouldn't be a good material for front baffles. By the way, I, I'm a little sick. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it or not. I, I can hear it, but... Uh, we're just getting through this, trudging through. All right, second comment comes from Mark Duvall. So Mark says a, a bunch of really nice stuff, uh, but then his question is, uh, I'm curious to see if the epoxy can stand up to more power, larger drivers and lower frequencies. Alas, that would be really expensive experiment as the epoxy is not cheap. First off, thank you, Mark. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's actually a lot of potential using the epoxy to make enclosures for speakers, especially into shapes that would be a little difficult uh, to make using regular wood. Um, part of that will definitely be testing the limits of the epoxy, uh, which should make for some fun experiments. Maybe I can get a sponsor for that. Hmm. Because yeah, epoxy is like really expensive. <laughs> I, I didn't really realize uh, that before starting this project. Uh, but one good idea that I have seen uh, at least one other YouTuber use to cut down on the amount of epoxy needed um, is to add some cheaper materials as a filler within the epoxy. Uh, like little plastic beads make for a really cool look in transparent epoxy. So I do want to try something like that out, uh, but if you are going out and want to add something to your epoxy for a speaker baffle, uh, be sure to add something that you can cut through um, pretty easily for the speaker openings, um, because like if you were to use uh, glass beads, uh, it'd be pretty tough to cut through the glass. Um, and yeah, you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to ruin your project uh, by adding something that's harder to cut. So just something to keep in mind. All right, and the next comment comes from Sped Racer 55 and he says, RGB bacon, that is all. Yes. Not really a question, I, I just wanted to share. And the next comment comes from Alex Nesteski, and Alex said, Kirby, why do you never talk about parameters and design philosophy in depth? For anyone really interested in audio and not just the looks, it would help justify your choices. I sometimes feel it is literally a promo video for your kit site. And then he goes on to say, uh, how do I say it? I feel like I learned nothing from this video. Yeah, I'd say you're totally right. <laughs> I don't go much into detail in my build videos. Uh, I really enjoy simple videos with uh, just the building and music, so that's just how I do those. <laughs> but uh, I have been starting to make uh, build talk videos that go into more depth of what I did, how, and why I did it. Uh, I made one for this build. Uh, I'll link it up here or down below. Uh, you should check that out. Also, I, ha I haven't made one in a while, but I have made uh, quite a few in-depth um, speaker building videos uh, that are, you know, in my back catalog of videos. If you if you want to go check those out, do a little searching. They're there. And to be honest, yeah, they they kind of are promo videos <laughs> for my speaker kit site, kmakits.com, uh, where you can find easy to build DIY speaker kits and plans. <laughs> go check it out. Um, kits and plan sales literally pay uh, for these build videos. Um, it's it's not necessarily cheap in all my videos. <laughs> uh, if I didn't sell kits and plans, I wouldn't be able to invest the time needed to do these projects and edit these videos. It, it's just me. Uh, I don't use an editor or have any staff. Can't really afford that right now. Um, I, I pack up and ship out every kit myself. Uh, as you might guess, <laughs> speaker building isn't exactly the biggest niche in DIY, um, but I think it actually can get bigger. Uh, and it's enough for one me, uh, one man show right now. And I'm really, really thankful for that.
I also think the kits are cool. <laughs> it's like a fun, interesting project that you can do by yourself, with a friend, with your kids. Um, you know, I don't do it just for the money. I think it's, it's a cool way to learn a skill. Do something with your hands. By the way, if you've ever helped support me, uh, this channel, my family, by uh, purchasing a kit or a plan, thank you so much. Uh, it honestly means the world to me. Thank you. That being said, I, I, I would probably push back on the just part of your comment. Um, I, I don't think it's just promo. Like, I, I like a lot of people, I think, um, enjoy just watching someone create something. Um, and I, I think it can inspire people to try something they might not otherwise try. I'm just out here trying to make speaker building porn, man. All right, that was a long one, but the next one comes from Spencer Mayer. And Spencer commented, what wood do you use for your builds? From least expensive to most expensive, I think. Uh, <laughs> I like to use MDF, Baltic birch plywood, hardwoods like maple, walnut, birch, and oak. Uh, and, and then there's the specialty materials um, like ceramic, glass, and I guess now uh, epoxy resin. I actually have a video on selecting enclosure materials. Uh, I'll put a link up here or, or down there. Um, this, like I guess everything, uh, can be a really deep topic and, and there's really no one way uh, to do it, to go about it. Um, but the TLDR is, is mostly you're looking for a material that has very little flex. Uh, a stiff enclosure is your goal, basically. Um, you don't want the enclosure to reverberate uh, with your drivers. Um, this can uh, in introduce uh, subtle problems to your responses. All right, the next comment comes from Saroj Patel 5575. And Saroj commented, damn, that's an awesome looking speaker. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, Kirby, would a two woofer, two tweeter setup be more superior to two full range and one sub woofer? Which would be better? Okay, so which is better, a two-way or a full range 2.1 system? I, I don't think I can say which is better because it depends on uh, what you'll be using the speakers for and where your skill level is at this time. So let's say you wanna design the speakers yourself and you won't be using uh, any plans or a kit or anything like that. Uh, well, if this is your first build, designing a two-way crossover will be more difficult than using uh, full range drivers and a 2.1 system. Uh, just in that full range drivers don't require any crossover uh, and most plate amplifiers have built in crossover adjustments for the sub. Um, you can also get 2.1 plate ampl amplifiers um, that would really make things a lot easier. Now, I'm certainly not saying you shouldn't design a crossover for your build. Uh, I absolutely think you should, um, but be realistic about your abilities and how much of a challenge you wanna take on, or I guess how much research you wanna do. How, how dedicated are you to that research? I do have a few videos on designing crossovers and just speakers in general. Uh, I'll put a link up there or down in the doop doop. All right, and the next comment comes from Endall39. Really cool to see how the epoxy could be milled and sanded. I would never have thought to try that, but now I may. Thanks. Yeah, I, I actually wasn't really expecting that either. Uh, it actually cut nicer than the maple I used in the builds. Like, <laughs> it cut much cleaner and easier. Um, finishing it was pretty easy if you're just going for a kind of satin finish. Um, if you want a high gloss, uh, just like any high gloss finish, it will take some time and some buffing and a lot of sanding, wet sanding, all that stuff. Um, but I'm really happy overall with working with the epoxy. It's, it's, it was fun. All right, the next comment comes from Thomas Lindros. And Thomas asks, do you seal the tweeter from the back or is the snug fit sufficient? Perhaps it isn't that important since it is vented. Otherwise, great video and keep up the good work. So the little tweeters I used in this build do fit pretty snug. Um, so I don't think it's critical to seal them from behind, uh, but I have done it in the past. A little hot glue works great. Uh, to make sure you have a tight seal. But it is important uh, to have good seals on a ported enclosure. Just because you have at least one big hole in your enclosure doesn't mean a bunch of little holes is okay. Uh, you want the air in the enclosure to react in uh, the way you intended uh, and having leaks everywhere will 
change all that. And of course, when making a sealed enclosure, it's also very important to not have any air leaks. Uh, we want our designs to behave in the real world like they did when we modeled them. Um, and there's never any air leaks in a computer speaker model. <laughs> all right, the next comment comes from Begos Budianto. Hmm, brown. What about with white color or uncolor? Uh, it'll be amazing speaker, all hail to RBG. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually super interested in making some white epoxy. Uh, I think a cream color uh, epoxy with some gray and gold would actually look pretty cool. Um, maybe even like a marbling effect. Uh, that project will probably happen. All right, and the final comment comes from Berchenization. So what is the story with those recessed woofers and tweeters? I thought you had been professionally called out for doing this a long time ago. Uh, are they not supposed to be flush? with the surface per the manufacturer and measurements. So I'm not totally sure uh, what call out you're referring to. Uh, if you're watching this, let me know down in the comments. Um, I'd be really interested in watching it or reading it, however I was called out. Uh, but you might be talking about uh, Impulse Audio's video on mounting tweeters. Uh, he didn't directly call me out in that video, um, but that's the only one I know of. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description. You guys should check out that video for sure. My thoughts on this is that people make speakers for all sorts of reasons, which is great. <laughs> so, some people want the best sound possible uh, for critical music listening. Some want a super small budget, uh, leaving aesthetics and sound behind. And, and some just wanna have fun uh, with design and, and make something that just sounds good. <laughs> and there's like a million variations in between. Um, these are all great reasons to build. What I think is bad is an idea that things can only be done one way, uh, that there's a right and wrong way to design. I, I just think that's outright the wrong way to look at things. I haven't heard a good argument that's changed my mind. So if you think you have a compelling argument, please let me know down in the comments. I'd, I'd really love to hear it. And this is not to say that there aren't uh, best practices. Um, I do feel it's important to learn the correct way first and then you can change it all you want. I know how to design speakers, you know, um, and, and you can question that all you want. I don't care. <laughs> Specifically on this channel, I try to cover a, a range of goals or reasons to build a speaker. Uh, sometimes they're technical and sometimes they're just for fun. Uh, I just like the look of back-mounted mid-range woofers. I know that changes the frequency curve of the driver. And, and to me, the aesthetic value outweighs the subtle change in frequency response. Any design is about compromises and give and takes. Uh, it's super hard to design one speaker that's good at everything and that everyone's gonna love the look of. It's probably not gonna happen, just flat out. So you make compromises and make a speaker or just a thing that you like and enjoy. Uh, who cares what you're supposed or not supposed to do? And just have fun, make something with your hands. Maybe don't put it on mine though. <laughs> Maybe just keep it for yourself. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. This is a brand new style of video for me. I've never done this comment thing before. Let me know if you guys like it down in the comments and hit the like button if you did like it. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button because I, I that's, <laughs> that's the only way I know. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the build videos. Go check out those other videos and, and my back catalog and all that stuff. There's some gems in there, I think. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.